and you'll notice that we're going to go under the subclavian. And here, it's nice to think about it in terms of our uh, Mr. Bone. All right, so basically what we're doing here, remember the, the, the Dr. Spock spot right here? So it's just, we put our finger down behind the, um, the clavicle, and there's a special spot right there. And the idea is we have to get the blood out of the thoracic cavity and over to the shoulder and the axilla and the arm. And the way that we do that is through the um, space, that triangular space between the anterior and the middle scaling. And so coming along with that artery is going to be the, uh, the vein of the, um, the uh, brachial plexus of uh, nerves. So we come down and we're going behind the clavicle, the clavian, and then we emerge and we become axillary. So what's covering over here now, remember we have the three muscles that come off of the um, coracoid. And um, so the coracoid is actually going to have the, uh, uh, what is it called? The um, pectoralis minor will have its um, insertion right here. And so pectoralis minor will come up and um, that's going to further protect that artery as it comes down. So it goes from the clavian to axillary. Before it ceases to be axillary, we have a nice branch that comes around the neck of the uh, humerus, and that's going to be called the um, anterior and posterior circumflex humerus. Okay, and it creates a little anastomosis right there. Okay, so. Um, we have to remember who's where. There's another little detail that I failed to tell you about the vertebra, vertebral artery is where does it come from. And the vertebral artery actually is a superior branch of the subclavian. Uh, so that would be like here and here. We would have the vertebral artery going up and ultimately becoming basilar. So we would go through the transverse processes of all the uh, vertebra, and this would be the vertebral. Okay. 